Uh, thank you for coming. I actually was not expecting so many people, like since this is like the last slot in the conference on Friday, I was expecting like two people, maybe like, you know, including the host room. <laughs> So, like, thank you really for coming. Like, it's, I see it's more than three even. Um, okay, so let's get started then, yeah. Okay, so performance tuning, troubleshooting, and reliability of Postgres, this is something that I was doing for past 10 years at least. Uh, and my main tool for doing two of these three things was always PG Badger. And that's why I'm a bit surprised when I Google Bing uh, uh, the name, like I don't really get a lot of resources about PG Badger and a lot of my customers and a lot of you, because I talked with some of you, like do use PG Badger. So I was really surprised that there is not so many uh, talks. So that's the reason I decided uh, to do one. And uh, shortly about me, um, I'm principal program manager in Azure database for Postgres flexible server at Microsoft. Um, I was for multiple years Postgres DBA consultant and I'm also the founder and co-organizer uh, of Warsaw Postgres users group and actually my co-organizer is there and counting you <laughs> like in the very behind. Um, and I'm also Postgres song producer, so I was able like, to play you uh, two of them. I was the first person that uh, produced a Postgres song. I'm very proud of that. And uh, uh, I was also like, I also produced like the second one. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Yes, and uh, yes, I don't know why nobody else is actually producing pro Postgres songs, uh, but uh, one of you, I'm not sure if Dave is in here, like approached me yesterday and he said he can sing and like we probably will do something together. So yeah, I, I'm really happy about this one. Okay, uh, I wanted like to tell you uh, what this talk is about and what this talk isn't about. So I'm not going to go into the details of like uh, some Postgres features, like out of vacuum, how it works, like what are the corner cases. Uh, it, this talk is absolutely not about that. Um, it, you know, I've been using PG Badger at probably over 100 of customers and like in 90% of the cases I see exactly the same problems that are pretty easy to solve actually because in PG Badger like this is visual representation of your database, what is happening in your database. It's really easily like to spot like the specific, um, the specific problems um, and also Sometimes, not always, obviously. It's pretty easy like to solve this problem. And um, um, so I wanted you actually to be able to do this because I've got like uh, too many calls like, you know, okay, I've got this PG Badger, you know, report, please tell me what to do. So I, I hope like this is kind of the scaling approach. So you can also like later on, like pick up the phone and, you know, and like help uh, some of your friends. So I want you to become like heroes in the organization, like for fixing like some most common problems. Okay, uh, let's start then um, uh, my personal troubleshooting checklist. Because PG Badger, like, it's a great tool, you can see a lot of stuff, but it does not contain everything. So uh, what I always doing when like a customer is coming to me and saying we've got a problem, like uh, suddenly our query latency went up or CPUs at 100%, uh, then uh, what I need is the snapshot of the system views like pgstat pg writer, pgstat activity, pgstat user tables, like all the pgstat views. Um, some people have like the tools to do that, like to take the snapshot, there are some uh, open source ones. But if not, you can just write a simple like a cron script, like just to gather this data, like uh, select now 
uh, star from PG star to PG rider in some interval, right? And then we've got the data. Obviously, you also need the OS level metrics like uh, CPU, memory, IOPS, right? Because we want to know like is if CPU is like fully utilized, it's not underutilized, you know, uh, and in some, uh, what point. Then obviously we also need like the instance data that we also will not find in the text logs, like Postgres version, like the SQU, not sure if you all know what SQU is, like this is uh, basically the term that we use in Azure, like to say, uh, this instance has uh, five uh, vCores and that much memory. Um, uh, obviously, a database and the object sizes and parameter settings. So usually I do just show all. I just ask for the show all output. So I've got like all the parameters with all the settings uh, on the instance level. And the logs, the text logs, not the wall logs. Right, because PG Badger uh, is the text log parser, and there you will find a lot of information about temporary files, about logs, about errors, about vacuum activities, and a lot, lot uh, more. So, how many of you have ever heard about PG Badger? Wow, yeah, <laughs> that that's great. That's really makes me very happy. And um, okay, uh, so as you probably know, it's the small standalone Perl script that works almost everywhere. You can you can download it and you can use it on your own laptop. You can have like separate VM uh, and install their PG Badger and like parse the log on the separate VM. Uh, it takes Postgres text logs as as an input and generates HTML report as the output. Um, and uh, yeah, another question would be how many of you do use PGStat statements? Okay, okay. So I do not. I don't like it, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, actually, PGStat statement like just it's just one tap in the PG Badger report. <laughs> So I don't need a PG state, state, stat statement if I've got PG Badger. Um, okay, uh, so installation. There are like a lot of ready to use uh, packages uh, uh, for almost any operating systems that you might have, like uh, for Ubuntu that would be apt get install PG Badger, for macOS like brew install PG Badger, and for Windows I would recommend to use WSL2 it will be much easier for you. Like WSL2, it's pretty, pretty good tool. And then, yeah, you've got the tool installed uh, and you are ready like to set up your Postgres instance to make PG, PG Badger uh, work. Um, okay, so what do we need to set to be able to generate the report. Of course, we need the text logs, right? By default, Postgres will not emit you the text logs uh, anywhere, like yeah, sometimes to the client. But will not like, you know, you will not emit to the text files, right? So you need to enable either logging collector or syslog. Um, logging collector is probably like the, um, the, the, the more, more popular choice. So uh, logging collector needs to be on. And this is the only parameter that needs to, uh, requires restart of your instance. The rest of the parameters will be dynamic. It means like you can change it like uh, when instance is up, you just need to reload uh, your config. Uh, the log line prefix. And, uh, this is a very, very important thing because in the logline prefix, you can, um, you can include a lot of important information. For instance, PID. PID is super important, so uh, process ID, right? This is like this person's P. Uh, the percent H, which is the IP of, the, of your client host. You probably would also like to see like um, uh, to which database uh, the client is connecting and on which user, right? Uh, so this is the one that I'm using. This is one uh, like that you can find in the PG Badger documentation also. Um, and it's 
pretty good. We can discuss like if this should be T or it should be M, like yeah, but it works in most of the cases. Uh, then log connections and log disconnections, right? This is uh, log connections, if you've got this on, you really want to have log disconnection also on because otherwise you will see like uh, at some point multiple millions of connections that never ends, right? And PG Badger will show you that like, oh, this connection took like one year. Oh, great, right? So you need always like this to, to be enabled. Uh, lock, uh, lock, uh, lock weights, yeah, in here. Uh, I believe that logs are the things that each DBA should look at, right? So we absolutely want them, want, want the logs to be locked. Log temp files, this is super important for the Postgres performance, super important, really. Uh, we'll be talking about that uh, in a couple slides. Log out of vacuum mean duration. I set it up to zero because it's usually you don't have like that many out of vacuum workers that it can cause like really big overhead. So it's pretty lightweight and it gives you a lot of information what your uh, out of vacuum is doing. So how many tuples it removed, how many pages it removed, uh, how many analyzes versus uh, vacuum. There's a lot of really, really useful information in that. And the most dangerous one that really can cause huge problem, like huge overhead on your database, and I saw that like a couple times, log mean duration statement. Like zero, I obviously love zero because then you locked everything, like totally everything, like select one, right? Um, but unfortunately that comes with a lot of uh, overhead because you've got obviously IO, right? A lot of IO needs to be used. So um, 60,000, this is in milliseconds, it's pretty safe. I don't say it's safe for each system, but for most of the system that would be pretty uh, safe Va value. It means like it will log the statement that um, take more than one minute. And yeah, this is if someone would like to discuss what to include in the log line prefix. So I know like some people like like M, which is time step with milliseconds. Like I'm using T, which is without milliseconds. I don't need that much of the precision, but you can see in here like how many data you are able actually to put to each line, each single line of your log, okay? So you can absolutely adjust that if you need something uh, specific. Okay, and I prepared like um, a very short uh, demo. Uh, and yeah, I probably like you, you saw uh, already one dog and now you're seeing the second and probably you're thinking like, yeah, uh, who are these dogs? So, you know, my dogs had um, like professional photo shoot recently. So, you know, you will, you will see a lot of uh, like the pictures like, uh, um, uh, of them like in the slides. So this one is Gustav, he's 17 years old and the previous one uh, is Stefan and like he's around uh, five, yeah. So I just prepared like a very simple example. I wanted to record that because it's always something, you know, something wrong with live demos, but okay, I have not. So let's do that. Um, I've got uh, like a couple of files with, with the Postgres logs. You probably, yeah, you probably saw that uh, before, at least uh, those of you that are using PG Badger. So actually what I wanted to show you, it's how easily you can generate the report once you've got the logs in the proper format. Like let's 11, it was, uh, 15, 11, two, four, something, two, four, five, maybe. Yeah, two, four, five, eight. Like, let's do this. So, there is like the name of the program. In this case, this is PG Badger. You've got the text log that you want to parse. And then the only thing that you need is the output. Like, give it like meaningful name. And. <laughs> And then like you probably want to have like HTML at the end because otherwise you will see not HTML, but like, uh, yeah, that's raw uh, report. Okay. 
and let's wait a sec. Okay, <clears throat> and you know, in here you can already you can already spot if like uh, the log was okay because your text log might not be okay. Like for instance, you might have like wrong log line prefix, right? Like let me show you this. This has absolutely good one. So you remember like um, <clears throat> the log line prefix was db. A percent, like probably D user percent something. So this value were, right? This uh, value were replaced with the actual data. So this is my log. This comes from log line prefix, okay? And the rest of this is just the log, right? Okay. Um, and if you would have something, um, if you would see, like for instance, the in here, you would see zero events, uh, zero queries. That's in most of the case. In most of the cases, this is log line prefix, okay? Or sometimes you've got the log when at the beginning you've got uh, wrong prefix, and then like uh, somewhere in the middle you start to have the right one, uh, and then you need to probably remove the first part or split the files. And PG Badger also has this. Uh, yeah, possibility that you, if you have used the custom prefix, you can always put it in here. So that would be my custom prefix. And it will be able to parse it. Okay. Okay, okay. it wasn't that bad with the demo. <laughs> okay, let's go next. Okay, so. We know how to generate the report. We are taking the uh, text uh, text logs. Then we need to have PG Badger to be installed somewhere on your laptop, on VM, on whatever you use. And then you are generating this HTML report. <clears throat> and then you've got this huge HTML file. I will show you the sample. Or maybe yeah, I will present that in this one. Okay, PG Badger sample. So uh, at the end, you will have something uh, like this. Let me make it a bit bigger. And uh, already at the very beginning, you've got important information. You've got number of unique normalized queries. You've got number of queries. What is the difference in here? Like if you would have like a select uh, percent, right? Uh, and you would have select one, select two, then select three, select four, it, it would be one unique normalized query. And then uh, select one, select two, select three, select four means like four uh, queries actually, right? So the same query with another uh, parameters. Then you have the total query duration. And it's not, uh, it's not always last query minus the first query. It depends on how many cores you've got and how long are your queries. So this is like the total time of the duration of uh, all the queries that you've got. So it might be sometimes uh, uh, actually bigger, sometimes might be, might be less. Um, and this is also important point uh, from which period this, this report was uh, generated. And actually what I'm usually uh, starting with, it's I'm like you will have the list actually in here. So yeah, I'm going more or less in, uh, in this uh, um, order. So first I go to the temp files and actually also not looking in here, but scrolling down Scrolling down somewhere here, and maybe I will make it a bit uh, smaller. Um, and what we can uh, see in here. So we do see like the specific queries that generated the most temporary files. Uh, so for instance, even if you've uh, got, uh, let's say you've got uh, one query that generated one terabyte of probably not, but let's say one terabyte of a temporary file, right? It was just executed once. You will not see it in here. You will see 
uh, you will see like, for instance, 1,000 of queries that generated 100 gigs of, uh, 100 of, gigs of uh, temporary files. And uh, what we can quickly spot uh, like from this view, the most important for me is this column, like average size. So if average size is something like in here, like 12 megabytes, I just do not think, actually. I just tell, okay, just increase work mem, right? Because it means probably that someone has the default work mem value, which is four megabytes. So if you are not running your Postgres on Raspberry Pi, then uh, I, you know you can absolutely go up with the work mem uh, value. And then you are going up, then you are generating the PG Badger again, you're trying to see if you still have this problem. With 12 megabytes, we really don't have, uh, we don't need to think too much, to be honest. If the value is bigger, like, you know, 100 megabyte or, you know, at least 50 megabytes, then, and, you know, you need, like, to have a lot of connections, then you start to think. Sometimes you've got the situation that you've got the stored procedures function uh, that is, uh, that is like uh, consuming these temporary files. So, you know, in Postgres, there is also an option to set another value of workmen per function, per procedure, also per database, per user. Maybe there is a specific user that is generating this temporary file, and you don't want to go too high on the instance because you might have OAM problems uh, after that, right? So it's pretty wise, like, to take this function, do alter function, and set work mem to the specific size. If you've got something I saw, I don't see that uh, super often, but uh, I, did, uh, I did see that in, the, yeah, in probably two customers, that they had over 500 gigs, like close to one terabytes of temporary files, so probably the only way then, uh, the only way then it's like to go to distributed Postgres, like some call, some solution of distribu some distributed Postgres solution. Uh, <clears throat> but if the value is like that, really just go up on the instance level with higher workman value. There's uh, not much to think about. Um, <clears throat> then, Let's go to the uh, second, my second favorite uh, tab, which is the vacuums. And the, uh, yeah, and the name of this tab is vacuums, but it actually showing you auto vacuum. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you were on uh, Robert Haas uh, talk, but yes, vacuum and auto vacuum are a bit different. Um, so this is like the auto vacuum. Um, this is the auto vacuum, yeah, how, it, how the auto vacuum works. And also what I'm doing as uh, the first step, I'm, you see, I, I never look at the first like uh, graphs for some reason. Uh, I always like, yeah, go to something else. And this is my favorite view actually. Um, unfortunately, I probably, it's better to go probably to the slides than showing you that in here. Yes, yes. Mm. Unfortunately, what I do see like super, super often, it's something like that. Um, and what this means, it's like your auto vacuum demon is focusing on probably one super small table, <clears throat> and it's vacuuming, 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 vacuuming over again. And, uh, you know, you, you, you might have, like, this small table, like in Azure, we've got this LSN mover. I know other clouds also have, like, th this kind of tables. You might have some kind of counter. Uh, you might have something that, you know, that's only update, update. It's, it's all, all the time, like, updated, right? So a vacuum is, like, going like crazy and, uh, and doesn't have time, actually, to go to the other tables. This is actually something that you should see. So as you see, there is, like, not much thinking. If you see this, it's bad, right? If you see this, you should be happy. Um, and uh, 
why is that? Why the auto vacuum might start focusing like just on one uh, small uh, table? Uh, because like the formula, uh, it's the auto vacuum uh, vacuum <coughs> threshold plus auto vacuum vacuum scale factor plus rel tuples. What this means, it's uh, the vacuum threshold, it's by default 50. So 50 rows, okay, 50 rows. And then the next component vacuum scale factor uh, is 20% of the table. Okay, so let's say uh, if the table has 100 rows, it's gonna be 20 rows, right? So for a table that has 100 rows, it's gonna be 20 plus 50, so it's gonna be 70. It's, yeah, 70, yeah. Uh, so um, uh, if 70 rows will change, Right, that will go to the queue for the auto vacuum to do something. And now uh, let's take this, yes, 20 gigabytes table. Uh, so the scale factor would translate uh, uh, to four gigabytes of the tuples. On one terabyte table, it's 200 giga of the tuples, meaning like if 200 gigabytes would change, then auto vacuum will start considering uh, like vacuuming this huge table. Um, so, like my quick trick, uh, this is something that works for most of my customers. So for super small and for super big tables, like I, I usually set uh, per table actually vacuum settings. Uh, the first one is auto vacuum vacuum threshold. I set it uh, for 10,000, default is 50, right? And the auto vacuum vacuum scale factor is zero because like very often like this small table has one row or 10 rows. So uh, taking the percentage of that like, yeah, doesn't make much sense. And um, actually when we set it up, like auto vacuum will start considering vacuuming this table like when 10,000 rows will change. Uh, and um, actually, um, when you do that, you will start to see uh, that the default, uh, for default settings for these parameters, like the threshold and scale factor, uh, works really well for the middle-sized tables. And the one on the both like opposite sides, like really would benefit from these settings. Uh, of course, like, uh, you know, table size might change. Really, like I know from experience. Uh, so, um, you know, you would need to probably revisit like the settings uh, after some time and see if still like this table is, um, <clears throat> is um, of the size that it was when you, uh, when you uh, set the settings. Okay. Uh, the next one would be the events. So this is actually the last tab, but it's super, super helpful, especially with the troubleshooting. Um, you know, if you would start like just to read the text log, it sometimes has a lot of lines. So I really like like PG Badger that is able like to aggregate uh, the events, so errors, warning, fatals in a way that is super easy to identify uh, what errors do occur like uh, the, the, the most commonly like occur, right? So I know that there's been 4,000 of this error. I know there's been like 15 of this error and you know, uh, and so forth. Why, why it helps? Uh, let me give you example like from the, the, the latest uh, logical replication problem troubleshooting. Uh, so uh, the customer uh, was doing logical replication and, um, and there was a problem. They didn't know what it is, right? And um, when they looked into the logs, they just saw the, um, <clears throat> they just saw like the uh, duplicated key error, right? It was duplicated key, duplicated key, duplicated key, duplicated key, and there's been like thousands of these uh, lines. In order like to see all the problems, because you know, 
was this duplicated key the main problem? Was that the root cause? Actually, it was not. It was like consequence of another error. And if you've got like just plain text log, it's really hard like to, you know, read all the logs and then go, you know, to the first one. And, you know, if you see in if you see the errors in this format, and also, let me go to the sample, because this already gives you like good view, but then you can expand and see like, for instance, okay, I know that uh, the outage was between 5 a.m. and 6 a.m., right? So I can also see which error was occurring at this time. So there's like a lot of cool hidden stuff, as you see in the, PG Badger, okay? Okay, so in this format, we were, we were able like to identify uh, the root cause, not the consequence of, of the problem, right? The, the root cause was actually that uh, the role that the replication was working on lacked the permissions to read the tables. And that caused like all the other problems then. Uh, so, in this format, it's way, way easier to identify the problems. Okay. Let's go to this one. Let's go to this one. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, there is like no tag or there is no category attached uh, uh, to the errors, um, but uh, actually, it's pretty cool tool for DBAs or for uh, developers if you don't like the other team, because you know sometimes you just see like okay, this is developer error, right? If you see something like invalid input, uh, syn uh, invalid input syntax for type date, right? It's clearly like the developer error, right? You can send away like the report to developers, and this is your job. It can be also like the clearly the DB problems, but the point here is that you see all of them with the number of currents and the timeline like in one consolidated aggregated uh, view. Uh, okay, uh, yes, I've got like a quiz, a short quiz. This is one of very interesting and a pretty common case that I see. Uh, and just wondering if you can guess what was the problem. Um, so, as you see, there is like process still waiting for exclusive log on tuple, on relation, after some time. Then it was process still waiting for share, share log on transaction, and then uh, still waiting for exclusive log on extension of relation. <laughs> Anyone want, wants to guess what, what was the root cause? <laughs> yeah? Uh, not not in this case actually. Okay, uh, it was like um, multiple clients, multiple processes were trying to update the same role. Okay, and this was like more or less clear, like from just you know from just this uh, simple view. Like you can also go to this one, and it was a, a bit more clearer then, um, uh, <clears throat> because like PG Badger also offers you the logs views. If you've got log, uh, log, log, log line uh, parameter enabled, uh, but the bad news is that PG Badger will show you, yes, what query was locked, but will not show you which query locked the query that is locked, right? So will not show you the query that caused the lock. It will show you just the query uh, that is locked. And uh, this is pretty much this another tab. It's pretty much PG stat statement, but in nicer format. <laughs> uh, so you will see like the, um, the, the, the time consuming queries like together with the total duration, time executed, mean, average, max duration. You're able like to um, expand the examples. You can, uh, you can see the users involved. 
um, you can also see the not the time the time consuming queries that, uh, that there is another like part of of this page maybe let me show you in here so you would have like the yeah i was i was uh, showing you sorry the top that is the top this is the time consuming queries uh, but you would also see most frequent queries, so the queries that were executed uh, the most of the times, not necessarily having the, uh, the, the, the longest uh, execution time, normalized slow queries, so you've got uh, all the time, uh, all the types of aggregations, like different kind of dimension, you can, you can look at, at that. Then, Okay, uh, yeah, I show you this one, I show you this one, and the gotchas, the log line prefix I told you about, this is, this is something, uh, this is like probably the most common error that I see, that you just forgotten to set uh, log line prefix, uh, and um, yeah, you're not able like to parse the logs or you uh, or you set like another log line prefix and you just need to add this option to the PG Badger, okay? That minus minus prefix and then in quotes the prefix that we are using and you will be able like to parse uh, the logs. Um, and like a very important thing to watch out is lock mean um, lock mean duration statement. I don't know why I've got lock mean duration in here. Uh, so it's lock mean duration. Uh, if you like f uh, have changed at some point lock mean duration statement from one value to another value, you might be uh, you might be having the wrong like not full. Um, uh, not full analysis of the PG Badger, right? Because it's very important if you are capturing all the queries in your system, or if you are just capturing the queries that uh, that uh, dura of duration like longer than one minute or ten minutes, right? You might not capture like the uh, queries that are you know executing super fast, right? And so you would need to interpret your PG Badger report in another way. And also, if you change like uh, in the time that you have generated the uh, report, you need to watch out, right? Because like you will see like another uh, another kind of distribution of the queries, another distribution uh, <clears throat> of temporary tables, for instance, right? Like up to some time, and then it will change. So. Uh, you would need to watch out. I, I, yeah, I caught myself a couple times like that. I forgotten about that, and my interpretation of the report was wrong. Uh, and this is yes, this is uh, this is very uh, similar statement. If you don't have lock, for instance, lock locks uh, enabled, then you will not see the locks, right? If you don't have lock uh, lock out of vacuum parameter enabled, you will not see out of vacuum actions, right? And the size, the size, it's also problematic. Like um, if you've got like small logs, you can you can parse it on your laptop. But if you've got multi terabytes logs, yes, I saw this kind of sizes. Then you probably need really really strong uh, VM to parse it. And then you've also have like this uh, minus J option. So you can use that many cores uh, as you like. Okay, I'm happy to answer any questions. And like, if if you would have like, if you would like to contact me, like this is my Twitter handle, this is my uh, work email, and if you would like to read more about my docs, like yes, this is the article. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Thank you very much for the nice talk. Uh, I have a question about the chart you showed that one table was aggressively out of vacuum, mm -hmm. the others were uh, equally out of vacuum. My question is, it can be the case that this, uh, this table is changing a lot. And is it like always the left-hand side or 
No, 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 no. If uh, this is actually, you know, really the table that needs a vacuum, it might be the case, then of course, like, this is okay, it's being vacuumed. I more was talking about the case that, um, you know, you've got just one row because this is actually the case I saw multiple times. You've got one row, it's, uh, mul it has multiple changes and obviously the size should be like if, if it would contain only live tuples, that would be 8K, right? Uh, but, you know, um, it actually doesn't bother me for this table to grow to 20 megabytes or 30 megabytes. And, you know, instead of doing this table, like do another table. Because, like, the situation is unfortunately often uh, that when you also have this PGStat user tables view, right, you would see that you've got huge table, like 100 gigabytes in size, and it it, it, this table was never vacuumed because auto vacuum demon had never got to this table because he had no time because he was all the time doing this, you know, cleaning up this this small ta table. But absolutely understand your point and also probably if this table is so small, it's in the shared buffer, so it's super cheap, right, to do that. But yeah, it's still a waste. Like if you don't have like too many uh, auto vacuum workers. Right, then you really need to think like which table it should be took to the queue, but absolutely good point. Yes, thank you for your talk. <coughs> Sorry. In your demo, you parsed one uh, log file. Is there a way to use a, a merge of several files? Yes, or? yes, yes. Let me show you that. I didn't want like, to parse everything because you know that, that would take a lot of time, but uh, we can do that, do this now and just let let it run. Like, so, you know, you can use the standard, like, if you want to take all from today, right? This is 12, uh, 15, where I've got star. I wanted star. Where is star? Okay, in here. Okay, uh, so you can do, like, now, right? Like, this thing, but, you know, it will, yeah, it will take time. It's probably because I've got four cores in here, I would then go with minus J4. It will be slightly faster, but just, you know, slightly faster. But, you know, if you've got this, you know, I sometimes got from customers like multi terabytes, like many terabytes of logs, so I needed to ship it somewhere on the big VM and then use like 32 cores actually to parse it. I was struggling for two days first on my laptop, then, yeah, I just, you know, spin up yeah, VM. Uh, <laughs> Uh, hi, thanks uh, for refreshing up on, on PG Badger. Uh, so uh, I would just like to add a like, small notice to this Kocha's list. I think one big uh, thing is also that uh, PG Badger only speaks English, I think. So, <laughs> so it's not usable, you know, in some cases then. Good point, yes. Thank you for that. Like the C you, needs to be also there, yes, 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 yes. But on the documentation, you would have like all the list of the parameters and you can, yes, absolutely do that. Uh, thanks for the talk. In managed environments, you often do not have access to the server logs. So how can you use PG Badger then? Mm, sorry, who's asking? Because I don't know where to look. Okay, Me? in here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, so you do actually. Uh, for instance, like uh, uh, if you are using AWS uh, RDS, um, like a couple years ago, that was a problem. And I remember like writing a script to change like the, uh, to change like the format that they're using because they did not allow to change log line prefix. And like, yes, I needed like to parse that. But luckily uh, after I did this huge effort of writing multiple set com sets, uh, the, the PG Badger introduced a support for, for RDS. So now uh, there is just, you, you've got just the option, you're just telling PG Badger this is RDS and we'll par parse that. And if you use uh, uh, Flex on Azure, uh, then uh, also I provided like JQ command, just one JQ command, because what we do, we have like the normal Postgres um, logs uh, in the JSON, and then you've got the message field in the JSON, so you just need to extract this uh, message. And also, in, if you talk about uh, Flex Azure, we have this new feature, which is downloading the 
plain logs. So then you just have plain logs, you download and doing exactly what I'm doing in here. Is that, is that a new feature? It is new feature, it was in single, then we had flex and we haven't had this feature, so we just introduced, so it's new in flex, it's old in single, yeah. Hi, thank you for the great talk. So building on that question, I'm a bit lazy and I don't like to set up like work analytics, uh, you know, workspaces to download files in, in JSON. So when can I get a feature where I can just go and download the PG Badger compatible report from Flex? <laughs> I'm not sure if my manager is here. <laughs> Yeah, you need to ask him. <laughs> Thank you for the talk. And <clears throat> I also using the PG Badger option uh, last parse that parse uh, just query from last uh, report because uh, sometimes uh, developer fix uh, the slow query. So then I download again the log, and with this option, uh, PG Badger skip all the lines that was parsed uh, last time and uh, parse just the new one. So I know that uh, that uh, new report uh, just contain the new new changes, so new new slow queries and and so on. So this is good option too. Yeah, yeah, thank you for mentioning that. And also there is like this this option and there is like this cool calendar view also that you can generate. So yes, absolutely, there's a lot more of PG Badger. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I would like to uh, thank you for your presentation at first. Uh, what's the difference between connection and session? That's a very good question. I never got to that, to be honest. <laughs> You, thank you. You, you mentioned you, the PG uh, stat statements. You didn't like that, and I, I, I tend to agree. But if you're trying to find uh, very quick or rather quick queries that are run in very many of them, um, uh, you don't, you don't, re you don't really want to want to put uh, the log mean uh, duration to zero. So you can't really um. get p either. You set it to zero for like. 10 minutes and, and you take the pain with this very slow system and, and you, exactly. get, you get lots of load, right? Exactly, yeah. you, can, you can do that. Yeah. This is like all the dynamic you know, parameters, yeah. so you can yeah. just set it like, and set it back and you, you've got you know, your stuff. Like, I've, you know, there's many reasons why I don't like it because you know, PG Badger is much more comprehensive. Like, you, probably don't say, you probably don't see temporary files, for instance, right, in the PG stat statement. Yeah. Right, you PC don't see statements. exactly. You yeah. don't see the logs. You don't see the, the vacuum, right? Like how vacuum was. You processed. just see the statements and how long they've been executed. So it you is, know, it, for just a, that use case of like where loops are looping over, yeah, pretty yeah. quick questions, but ten yeah, thousand but, times. Yeah. But then you can match one mm. tab, you know, of the queries with the tab with temporary files, and you see straight away why this query is slow, right? I've got the slowest query in the system. Okay, I see that it's in the temporary files tab, so it's because it's generating temporary files, and I've got the answer straight away, right? That's it. No more time for questions, unfortunately. But you can speak to Alicia after the talk. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.